This poem is one in the Celtic mythology series. It's probably or is the longest story in the Mabinogion. Uh, and it's a story of uh, two characters, Cullick and Olwyn. Cullick, the king's son, is destined to marry a giant's daughter called Olwyn. And this is the story of his search for her and of his help that he gets from his kinsman, King Arthur. This poem has lots in it. It has mythical characters, real characters, uh, mythological creatures and people with uh, superhero powers. It has talking animals. It virtually has everything. And I hope you like it. It's that long a poem that I've split it up into six or seven different sections. The first one, or part one, is meeting Arthur, where Cullick goes to find the king. Cullick was born with the sows in the sty. His mother, senseless in pregnancy, wandered. Regaining her senses, she gave birth and died. He was taken to his father, the king, by the swineherd. His father, who later remarried, to a neighbouring queen with the daughter. Her stepson, then the queen, hurried. She wanted Cullick to court her. But Cullick, who was not ready to wed, marriage to the queen's daughter denied. The queen, enraged at this slight, then said, A curse on you! Take the giant's child, Olwyn, as bride. The giant Isbadadden had a daughter called Olwyn. A prophecy said he would die if she wed. Her suitors had to complete difficult tasks set by her father to keep a suitable man away from her bed. Cullick went to his father. What do I do with this curse? Am I fated never to wed, for the giant will not agree? Do I wander this kingdom alone, and what is worse, is Olwyn the one bride for me? His father the king said there's one but one thing to do. You must go forthwith, your finest clothes will I bring. Mount your fine horse, take your hounds too, and you seek cousin, seek your cousin Arthur the king. Ask for his help, we will not refuse, for a kinsman of his do you stand. The thoughts of a quest will greatly amuse, his knights are the best in the land. So Cullick dressed up in gold and silver attire, his horse he, he girded with the best. His hounds at his side, his ride was on fire, swiftly he rode over the crest. At Arthur's great hall he stood at the gate. The gatekeeper summoned to he. You will let me in, although I am late, at this feast I am destined to be. The gatekeeper laughed. I'll not open the gate to you, for the feast has already begun. You'll find food and lodgings for your animals too, at the hostel nearby, so be gone. At this Cullick said to the man, you will open this gate to me, or three shouts I'll give as you'll hear. One heard in Cornwall and one in Glenshee, and in Ireland they'll hear it so clear. Any woman with child who hears these calls will instantly miscarry their baby, and all those in earshot within these walls will never with child ever be. At this the gatekeeper went to the king and told him what he'd been told. Arthur intrigued, said, go let him in. We'll question this man who survived. When the gate was opened, Cullick rode in, his hounds running at his side too. Greetings to you and your lord, said he to the king. I will ask for a haircut from you. 
to ask such a thing related we must be. Said Arthur, tell me of your kin. Colic then gave his family tree. You are welcome, Arthur said. You are my cousin. Thank you.